But again, I just want to welcome everybody to our conversation this evening. I'm happy to see so many faces in the audience. I appreciate you all taking time out of your evenings during the week to be with us. I know it's a busy time of year with school uh, happening and, and holidays approaching like Halloween. So I know that everyone has a really busy schedule. We're going to honor your time tonight and we're going to stick to our agenda. And um, uh, before we get started, I just wanted to introduce some of the city staff and, and other um, resources that are in the building or in the uh, room with us this evening. Uh, my name is Kathy Rodriguez and I'm from the Office of Historic Preservation. I'm the Deputy Historic Preservation Officer. And over here to my left is Shannon Miller. She is the Director of Historic Preservation. Over here we have Adriana Ziga. She is a planner from our office as well. Sitting down in Lavender is uh, Jimena Copa Wiggins, and she is our public relations manager. Sitting next to him is Orlando Ramirez, and he is from District 2 office, chief of staff. And over here uh, to my right, I have uh, Claudia. Claudia Guerra is our cultural historian, and uh, Mimi Quintanilla is our facilitator for the evening. And then next to her is Corey Edwards. He is a planner from our office as well. Did I miss anyone? And Catherine Hernandez, thank you for being here. She is from Development Services. She is a planning manager, a zoning manager. So she's going to be a resource for you all if you have questions related to zoning. I also need to mention um, that we are going to have uh, Councilman Tony coming in here shortly. He's finishing up another meeting. And when he arrives, he may want to say a few more remarks to the audience when he gets there. Just some housekeeping. The restrooms, when you came in through the front entrance, you may have seen a yellow wreath. That is the teacher's lounge. So there's some adult restrooms there. Um, also, if you exit the room here and go to your left, there are some signs that will lead you to the pint size restrooms. So there are restrooms back there too, but they're, they're the smaller ones, they're the kids' restrooms. So just wanted you to know that they were there. Um, we're going to go ahead and kick off by talking about the uh, the meeting, the goals for the meeting, and an overview. And I'm going to hand it over now to uh, Mimi Quintanilla. Well, now let me know if this is too loud because I have a voice that manages to carry, so it's okay. Can you hear me? No. Still can't. All right. Well, um, pick Close. it up. Close right. your mouth. Well, I'm worried about feedback. Um, okay, our uh, first thing I want to do is want to go over the meeting goals for tonight um, to also remind you that this evening's program and this evening's discussion is not about any specific neighborhood. It is about historic designation in neighborhoods around the community. I think that we have um, a number of people that some, I know one couple came in that um, has a vested interest in this particular neighborhood, but they live in Leon Valley. How many people are from the Makey Park area? Oh goodness, okay. How many people are from another neighborhood? All right, would you like to tell me what other neighborhoods are represented? Yes? Just Tobin Hill is North Tobin Hill, all right, any others? Almost Park Terrace. Almost Park Terrace. Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie. Also Vista. Alta Vista, missions, all right, great. Well, this meeting and the concerns and questions and answers and the things that we're gonna be going over this evening are for historic potential, historic neighborhoods and apply to historic neighborhoods and historic districts throughout the community. So it's not specifically about one particular neighborhood this evening. So I hope we will be able to answer all of your questions. The meeting goals tonight are to present an overview of what historic designation means to you as a property owner, to provide an opportunity to hear and report your questions and concerns to improve communications. Um, I think there's, there's an opportunity for the Office of Historic Preservation and the community to communicate with each other more clearly, um, and then to learn from each other about communication and how to better um, provide information on historic district designation. Um, as with any meeting um, or in any family situation, there are a few ground rules this evening. And so let me figure out how to change this slide. Okay. I'm sorry, I forgot I was driving. Okay, uh, never mind, it's okay. okay. Don't, don't put that one up. Okay. The ground rules for this evening, and I will reiterate these when we have our discussion, are that all comments are good and will help strengthen the process because what we're here tonight to do is to strengthen the process and to strengthen communication among ourselves as neighbors and ourselves as property owners 
in potentially um, historic district designated areas, and also with um, the city and the Office of Historic Preservation. Uh, we're also going to focus on the topic of discussion, which is questions, concerns, and comments about historic designation. And then we're going to be good listeners. We're going to listen for comprehension, and it does not require agreement. When we listen to each other or we listen to what's going on, it doesn't mean that we have to agree, and we're just hearing other points of view or different ways of interpreting the same language. Um, and we're going to avoid talking while others are speaking, and we're going to respect agreements about time. And my apologies, because we've already started a bit late, so we are going to more than likely, with your permission, run a few minutes over at the end um, with the public with the commentary and the questions and answers at the end of the meeting. Are there any um, ground rules that I have forgotten at this point? Cell phones. Ah, yes, please. If you would put your cell phones on silent. Um, also, I know that this meeting runs till 8.30 at a, a breaking point, probably uh, towards the middle of the meeting, we'll have a stretch break, and anyone who needs to leave um, because you have other commitments at family or other things, then that will be a convenient time for you to be able to leave without having to step over people. So we'll have a stretch break, a short bathroom break, and anyone who has to leave can, um, can leave the meeting. Uh, we do have Nowcast that is um, recording the meeting, so that will be available also. All right, I'll turn it over to Claudia. Um, can everyone hear me? Unlike my colleagues, I do sing on the weekend, and I do like a microphone, so I'll try to keep it uh, from squeaking, you know, that really squealing noise, so let me know if that happens. Someone back there can't hear me. All right, how's that? Got it. Okay, so the hard part of this is that I can't hold my notes and the microphone at the same time, and I kind of like being in the driver's seat for a little bit, so if you don't mind, I'm going to take the clicker, and I'm going to wing this a little bit. Um, I'm happy to see such a large turnout. It means that everybody really cares about their neighborhoods, and I hope that we deliver information to you that you find useful. Part of what I want to get across are three main points, because you're going to hear a lot tonight, but if you can leave with three main points that I think will clarify. Whoops, not going anywhere. And I've sort of categorized them in easy ways to remember. Two numbers, 30%. I think that will be a big um, clarification that we'd like to address tonight. I'd like to introduce another number that doesn't get spoken about very much. That's 99%, and that has to do with the, eight, uh, the design review process. And then the last one is not a number, but it's a letter, and it stands for you because we want to hear from you tonight. That's the entire point of tonight's meeting. And we also want to clarify how you are the keystone for the historic designation process in your neighborhood. So let's get right to the 30%. Um, I know that this is a big question. And I think maybe the easiest way for me to talk about this is to say what it is not. It is not a vote. It is not leaving the decision up to 30% of the neighborhood. What it is, is just a signal that 30% of the neighborhood has heard about an application to make a neighborhood historically designated. And it shows that 30% have decided that, yeah, I kind of want to hear about this a little bit more. It doesn't mean you're committed to becoming a district. It doesn't mean it's going to be designated. It simply means we want to open up the discussion and we want more information. Kathy, anything to add in there? Perfect. Okay. okay. Um, the next number, I'm going to turn over to Kathy to talk about some more. Um, but first, I just want to lay out the groundwork by saying 99%. That's the number of applications to modify your home, anyone's home, that gets approved. 99% of modifications to homes in historic districts are approved. And I'll pass this over to Kathy to explain further how we arrive at that number. And just real quick, just to kind of put this number into perspective, um, if you think about, um, you want to move to the next slide. If you think about um, the number of historic districts and the number of individual landmarks and the number of river improvement overlay properties that uh, come to our office for requests when they're making changes to their properties, um, there's tens of thousands. And so we actually receive um, annually this last year, we received about 1,400 
um, applications. We'll move to the next slide. About 1450 applications, and of those uh, applications, I would say about 900 and. 50 of those are um, applications that we review on the spot. You walk in, you show us the application, we approve it, you get your permit, you go home and begin work. And then about 500 of those are um, applications that go to the uh, commission for review, uh, which doesn't really delay your process very much because if you're doing a project that has some significant changes, you're going to be going through the permit process anyway. And so this process, um, the review, is just concurrent with that. So the same things you would turn in for your permit, the same drawings, um, are the same ones you would provide us so we can get you approval through the commission. So that 99% means out of that 1,450 applications, 99% of those are approved. Claudia? And we're going to try to rush through this because we know you have a lot of questions and we've made this intentionally short so that we can get to some of the heart of the discussion with you. But I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about what historic designation does not do. What it does not do is require you to retrofit your home. You do not have to bring your home up to some standard that the house existed in previously. You simply have to maintain the house. We also do not have any purview over the interior of your house. Whatever you want to do inside your house does not come to OHP or the HDRC Commission. Also, we do not have any say over how you use that property. It's simply an overlay to the, to the house. An overlay meaning an added piece of information of protection for your house being historic. And, and that's where Kat Hernandez uh, in the back, who you met earlier, is our, our zoning guru. And so when she talk, we talk about the use of property, we're talking about whether you use your house for, as in the picture, a cooperative, an art cooperative. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily uh, change what, how you use your property. It also doesn't mean your property cannot change over time. We know that families grow. We know that situations change. So you're allowed to change your house to accommodate those needs. And this is an example of, let me go back. This is what this house looked like. And this is what this house looks like now with a, a new rear addition. Um, let me see, I can't remember where my notes were. Ah, and now this is about you. And I'm gonna give it to Kathy, but just I really want to quickly say, you are the, the keystone for what happens in your neighborhood. You do get to decide. You are the ones who drive the designation process. OHP is a resource. We're here to give you information. We're here to give you tools. But ultimately, you decide. Um, I really, I just wanted to add to that, that um, one of the things, I have a little bit of a background in community development. And people always ask me, what is community development? I don't know what that means. Well, what it actually means, the definition of that is just helping residents use the tools that are available to them to achieve the results in their community that they want. And those tools are the, the ordinances, local ordinances, review process, boards and commissions, and city council. So that's, we are a part of those tools. We are a resource to a community who has concerns perhaps about demolition and other things that we'll talk about. Historic Preservation and our office in particular are here to help you um, manage those changes in your neighborhood and those types of um, uh, changes that come about. So I want everyone to keep in mind that you know whether you're historic or not, we are a resource to help you with either historic information about your property or your neighborhood or to help you with some development related questions, um, to help you engage your, with your community. We do a lot of education and outreach so we are ultimately a resource for you all and so that's why this meeting is so important to us because we get an opportunity to, to hear what you're saying, to look and listen, and that's what we're here to do this evening. Um, many people will ask why preserve? Um, and like I just mentioned, preservation, historic preservation really is a tool for communities who are concerned about um, maintaining the character. Usually you buy into a neighborhood because you just love the way it looks and feels. And so historic preservation is a tool you can use to hold on to that. We all know that change is inevitable. It's about managing that change, and, and, and that's what this can be a resource for. Um, things in, in your neighborhood that you like, the streetscape, the, the landscape, the curves, the pattern of the driveways, those types of things, um, if you're interested in preserving those, this is a way that you can do that. 
Um, here, for example, so this is an example of a, a typical ranch style sprawling house in the neighborhood in San Antonio. Notice uh, it is of an era that maybe we think of being more modern, but it is a, it's historically eligible now. Also take a note of the trees. These are mature heritage type of trees, oak trees. Um, and this is not currently in a district, a historic district. It's eligible, but it's not in the district. So I want to show you what's going on in the neighborhood uh, and why some of the, the people in this neighborhood are wondering whether they want to go historic. This is not on that same lot, but it is down the street from this lot. It's a completely new home. Um, I think the first thing I notice when I look at this is how all the trees were destroyed. The second thing that architects especially will notice is how the house does not fit the historic character, either in, in size or massing. And, and those are terms that architects will talk about and we will talk about as we start to discuss what historic des designation means in terms of how property looks. The other thing historic designation really strives to do is to prevent demolitions, empty lots. And to us, an empty lot, the way we think of this, it's like, um, it's like a beautiful smile that's lost a tooth. It leaves a significant gap. So, at this point, we want to bring it back to you. I'm going to turn this over to Ms. Quintanilla, who will explain how we're going to uh, work for the next sessions where we, we start to hear from you. Um, Mimi, are you ready to cross stage now? Okay. Um, what we are going to do tonight is we're really going to try to listen to all of your concerns and all of your comments, and there are three main questions that keep coming to the forefront in the commentary and discussion that's come through so far. And those three questions are, uh, what are your questions about historic designation? What are your concerns about historic designation? And are there other questions that could be related to historic designation that you want answered? Maybe you're not sure about them. How we have um, decided to handle the evening because there are so many of you, thankfully, it was looking a little lean in the very beginning, but I think we have a completely full house, is we planned a two-part information and listening session that we're going to be gathering you on the table, um, each of the tables, and these elementary school tables have been uh, divided up for us, so there's about six people to a table, I think there's 15 tables, um, louder, okay, there's about 15 tables. On that table, there are uh, markers. There are what you might recognize if anyone has been in the school system recently as sentence strips. And we are going to ask that each of the tables discuss the three questions. And if there are other things that are not um, that are not related to these questions that you want brought to the forefront, that you please record those. We are going to put all of those um, together at the end. We're going to to give you. Um, about 20 minutes to discuss your concerns and answer these questions and add any other questions. And then we will share those main concerns with the participants at the end, but we'll record everything. We're going to also put those up for everyone to take a look at. Um, the second part of the session will be, uh, we'll have a short break and then we'll have questions and answers when we can address the entire public. We'll do a report out session for each table. We'll take about three minutes do that report out based on your discussion, and then we will have everyone hearing everything. But we want to make sure to record what you're, what you're discussing, and so that's why we're asking you to please put that together on one of those long strips of paper so that we've got that accurately um, accurately recorded. And those, those concerns and those questions will be put together in a compendium that will help to inform the communication. And I think there is... Obviously, since there's so much interest, there's there's a lot of communication that needs to be cobbled together. There's a question from the audience. Yes, is that recording made available to make a copy later? Or? Sure. sure. Um, the Nowcast is available. It's online. It will, they're recording the whole. Um, so we go to your website? To, to Nowcast's website. Yes. And we'll put that link up on the OHP website. And again, we're, 
Again, we're going, we're recording what's happening at each of the table discussions. We have 20 minutes for that, then each table will have three minutes to report out. We'll take a short break, and then anything that is not, has not been discussed, or that you think um, needs to be, needs to have some more time or some more uh, illumination, some more discussion, or a question that you want to make sure gets recorded, then we'll have the questions and answers for the entire group at the end. And we're going to be putting all of the sentence strips up so we can take a look at those before you leave this evening to make sure that we haven't left anything out. Again, the goal, one of the goals of this evening is to improve communication and to answer the questions, address your concerns, and listen to your comments about historic designation.